Greetings! We are going to talk about for loops in C++. This will serve as a review if you're coming from Java or C++, um, or it'll serve as an introduction if you're coming from Python. First thing to note is that C++ for loops are very different than Python for loops. In Python, what we typically think of in Python, we would call them in practice a for each loop. That's really what it is. You have a collection like a list, and you're iterating through every kind um, of item in there. The C++ kind, the one that we're going to look at, is kind of more like in Python our range-based for loop. Okay. And so the way that we have the structure is, as you see below, we have three statements. So a for, and then an initialization, a condition, and an update. So it's kind of a neat little structure because it packs a lot of information in a tiny block. Um, it is set to basically count in a range through, a, through uh, whatever you want to do with those numbers. So let's examine each piece. Each one is an individual statement. You'll notice it has the semicolon after it. Right? So the initialization, this is where you create your initial variable. So if you want to go through a range of numbers, you might say, I'd like to start my integer at 0. So that's essentially what the initialization does. Your condition is then, when do I stop my loop? So this is your Boolean expression, meaning I would like to count to 10. So I'm going to count, uh, incre uh, going through this loop as long as whatever number is less than 10, if that's what I'm looking for. And lastly, this is the update. So uh, in Python, right, you can just have a range function and the range will just add numbers for you automatically. You say, you know, range, range is 0 to 10, and it'll just count for you. C++ doesn't count for you. So we need to say, hey, every time I end the loop, please add 1 or add 2 or add 7 automatically to the number. So you have to manually dis do that. That's the difference. So these are the three pieces. Okay? Let's look at an example. So this is a simple for loop, which is going to print out the numbers from 1 to 9, right, not including 10, and it will print out the number if the number is even, right? So this is count to, uh, let's say, 0 to 9, because 10 won't be included, and then print even numbers. Okay. So the first thing we do is we say four parentheses, and then we initialize the counter. So this is going to be a temporary variable that you're only going to use in this loop. Okay? So i is great to use for an integer. So let's just say i equals 0. Okay? Then we say, all right, how long do I want to count for? I would like to count until i is less than 10. And so what happens in the sequence of execution is the very first thing we do in our first loop is we check this condition. Is this condition true? If it's false, we'll actually won't run the loop at all. We'll just stop. If it's true, then we execute the body of the loop. In this case, we check the number, do the modulus of 2. If the modulus of 2 is 0, that means it's even. So we print out that number. So we run the entire loop. Then, so we finish the loop. We are right here. We're done with the loop. Before we go to the next iteration, we update the variable. So remember C++, when you say I++, plus plus, semicolon, what that really means is, so this actually secretly means I equals I plus 1. So it's basically saying add 1 to I. That's what this, this kind of concise syntax is doing. So i plus 1 means it's going to 1. And then, what do we do? We check the condition again. This is the, this is the cycle. Check the condition. If it's true, run the body of the loop. If it's false, exit. And that's basically the general structure. So the way you can think of another way to think about this for loop is we have in a C++, we have our initialization. And then we have our 
uh, iteration. And that's going to be, we, we check the condition, we run the body of the loop, and then we update the variable. And this part just repeats again and again until the condition is done. So it's definitely more complicated to write than Python. But if you think of it as a range loop in Python, um, I actually find it, it kind of elegant, the way you can package a lot together in a, in a single line.